Welcome everyone to another Spirit Coffee Talks episode. My name is Elise and I am joined by Lisa Richmond and Jeanette Bureau and we are all mediums and channelers with Avalon Spirit. We also have a short cameo by Winston the Puggle. This week we get into some intense and emotional topics. So I want to start off by offering a trigger warning um, as we discuss the residential schools, we talk about the patriarchy and more of the deeply damaging things that we're seeing come to light in this time. So please take care of your spiritual and mental health. And with that, I also encourage you, if you are a person of privilege, to sit with any of the discomfort that may come up during this discussion, because it, it could be there. In this episode, we get into how, as spiritual people, it's important not to turn away and default to the love and light, but lean into our shadows and the shadows of the world when we see these things arise. We also discuss how, while it's painful, the unearthing of these things going on and our histories is imperative in order for our world to raise its collective consciousness and truly break down the structures that hold many people down. We talk about how this has to happen to truly make space for every human and from every background to create true equality and how we can hold space for those voices to be heard. So with that, we hope it serves you. And welcome to Spirit Coffee Talk. My name is Elise. I am a medium with Avalon Spirit, and I'm joined today with Jeanette and Lisa. All right. Hi. Thanks, guys. Um, so today we are going to talk about some um, uh, heavy stuff, some polarizing stuff, and some very triggering things. But before we do, we really want to clarify that to everyone listening, if we talk about um, patriarchy versus matriarchy or toxic masculinity versus toxic femininity or shadow masculine versus shadow feminine. Any of those things, we are using those as representatives of oppositional forces. One being very linear, one being curvilinear, one being open to change, one being more structured or old fashioned. We're not talking men against women, and we really want to clarify that. This is not about men against women, women against men. As a being that I am in this life female, I have masculine traits and energies within me, as does everybody else, regardless of their gender uh, and how they align with their gender and what that is for them. So we just really want to be clear about that before we start, um, because we we were talking about what terms we can use to describe the things we're feeling. and. And those terms can be triggering depending on where you sit in the spectrum of everything, opinions, thoughts, reactions, sensitivity to everything happening right now. So we just want to put that out there. Yeah, like an example of like a, ma a shadow masculine could be more of an energy of like forcefulness or mm -hmm. um, no willingness to to bend or change, you know, like really staunch kind of energy. And a woman can hold those traits it, it, it's not just designed for a man so it's just more describing the energies right and then there's the light masculine where it's, it's like action doing you know like that kind of stuff which is a, a masculine energy but it's light and it's it's in all of us so yeah i think that sometimes when, when people just hear masculine and feminine they assume male and female right and we hold all of them so Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I think that's important for us to know because um, as we have all been seeing in our own connections with spirit and even some of the coffee talks we've already done, we've talked about the unearthing that's happening, the revealing of truth. If we even go back to December 20th, uh, December 21st, 2020 in the winter solstice, we had a huge shift that happened and they said 2021 and we've had conversations about this. 2021 would be the surfacing of truths, of things in many ways. We are seeing that literally, but we're also seeing that in um, exposures through people's stories, through uh, data that's coming out, through documents that are being revealed. There's many revealings that are happening right now, and we're really getting into the thick of it. Mm -hmm. And so I think the invitation for everybody as we're talking about this, those that are listening, is to... Um, have a willingness to see all sides 
Mm-hmm. See where you, uh, not where you fit, to see what resonates with you, what aligns with your truth within through this change. And, yeah, and even just knowing that all information comes from different sources and some sources of information align better with some than others, right? Mm-hmm. And we don't have to necessarily be um, on one side or the other, but it's just being open that there's going to be, there's, there is already, and there's going to continue to be a lot of surfacing of um, some pretty yucky stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be a lot of uh, really high places being exposed um, of shadow stuff that has been there for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And it's almost everywhere mm-hmm. on the globe. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful. I think that we're having this conversation. One of the real kind of learnings for me in the last year is, you know, 2020, I was, I was kind of, I don't want to say removed from my spiritual self, but I kind of put it on pause, right? My dad had just passed and I was just grappling with like what was happening in my own life. And then as, you know, as COVID progressed and we already started to see a lot of that unearthing, right? Things that had been kind of right in front of us, especially those of us that sit in a more privileged place, things that were happening right in front of us that we weren't looking at or paying attention, or we were kind of unconsciously, but actively turning our eyes away, started to be, you know, really revealed to us, um, you know, like the Black Lives Matter and um, those types of movements. And One of the things that was really um, something that I had to grapple with and I tried to do a lot of learning and I think I'm still learning, especially as I've come back into connection or opening up that spiritual self because it was never gone, Mm -hmm. is how you bridge social justice with spirituality. Because I think in past there has been a history of light and love and, you know, I'm sorry that happened to you sending you light and love. And I'm, I'm very passionate, I think, about how that we have to remember that while everything, you know, we can be spiritual beings and there's these divine aspects of ourselves and our, our souls are pure and good and light and love is very true. We're also human beings and we're also we're, we're living in these meat suits that have DNA codes and generational trauma and experiences that make living in this 3d world a lot more challenging for some than for others and so this idea of like yes that's sad and light and love sending prayers isn't enough it's truly not and i think you know i'm really grateful to be having this conversation because i think we can bridge the two to say like as spiritual people how can we look at the atrocities and like really look at them as things are uncovered and use the spiritual things that we know and the divinity that we have to also help people in this 3D world and hold space for people in this 3D world. Because, you know, at the end of the day, when we're looking at some of the things happening in Canada right now, with the Indigenous, uh, the residential schools and everything, it's, you know, they're a very spiritual, in tune community that they were disconnected from that ability to do so. It was illegal for them to practice their their teachings and their, you know, um, their culture. And so I think it's just, it's an important thing as we move forward to bridge the two and really use that light and love to actually make change, to make this world better. Because we can like, you know, meditate and pray and do all the things, but if we don't, you know, take action as a society in this 3D world, I don't think we're going to see the conscious evolution, but we're definitely not going to see the equality and the beautiful lives that people deserve to live come to fruition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And so really what you're saying is like, we need to take spirituality, so the right brain and really merge it with left brain to make action happen. Mm -hmm. Right, like we need to actually be intellectual Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. and that's what I'm trying to practice. You know, I was uh, engaged in a conversation with somebody on the internet, which can be tricky. And, you know, I was really trying to come at it from a not 3D angry place, but uh, this is the reality of things. And let's, let's be upfront about that. I'm not going to, you know, drop into that angry side, because at the end of the day, 
yelling at somebody on the internet is not going to change their mind, right? That's where I believe, and for my own lessons and learning, engaging in conversations and helping us learn as a collective. From my privilege standpoint, I want to engage with people and in, try and instill learning and shifts of perspective rather than, you know, angry screaming on Facebook um, that just in, it creates more angry screaming on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a, I think it's something that we're all unlearning in the face of everything that's coming to light. It's so complex and there's so much to it. And I think we're just really seeing that the time is over to turn away from the things. And as Lisa, as you were saying, it's, you know, these things are being unearthed. Do we want to be on the side of change and supporting, truly supporting humanity? Or do we want to just continue on kind of with our heads in the sand? You know, this is something too, that while you're talking, um, my guides are saying how we need to make space for the stories to be told. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes what I notice is, um, sometimes people will get caught up of like, well, that was uh, our history or that's how things were. And now we're in light and love and we're focusing on light and love and focus there. But to heal, there needs to be amending that takes place in, in the many ways, right? Like there needs to be space for the story to be heard. It has to come out, has to be shared, has to be heard to then be able to move forward. And if we don't make that space for stories to be heard, um, it prevents that movement forward and it prevents that compassion and understanding to come together again like lisa and i were talking about last week when there's two sides just beaking at each other trying to be heard there's no space in the middle but when you make space for the story to be placed on the table and this story to be placed on the table then there can be like co-creative mending that happens mm -hmm. but not until there's space for the stories which we're getting many stories on many levels, community, personal, individual, political, financial, uh, markets, cultures, we are unearthing stories. Stories are coming out and we need to hear them, like you said, without turning a blind eye or just turning away and forging forward. It's like you can't ignore the fire burning behind you. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah, I... I think, um, I think too, you know, one of the things that really becomes important, like you said, is listening to the stories. And I think, you know, a lot of spiritual practices um, traditionally are based in the heritage of some of the people that are at the hands of a lot of the atrocities that we're seeing be unearthed and a lot of the terrible things coming to light. And so I think, as a community and as a world, we have so much to learn mm -hmm. from them and their stories and both the things that are really hard to hear um, and also the things that are so divinely beautiful about them and their healing. Um, and I just think, I, I just so agree with what you said and what your guide said in that, this, the, the space. Um, I also think the space to hear and the space for us to process, like, what does this mean for me as an individual? What does this mean for me as I show up in the world? How do I want to interact with people? How do I want to, you know, engage in conversations about these things? What kinds of changes do I want to see in my own way of being? Um, and I think we talked about 2020 being like, you know, the year of clear vision. And I, I only see that, you know, 2021, isn't that like the clearest of vision? Like if you get 2021 vision, you're like, is that a thing? I don't know. Uh, but it's like, you know, we're getting clearer and clearer and clearer, but in order to get clear, you have to see first. You can't yeah. keep the eyes closed. <laughs> Otherwise nothing is clear. You're just kind of inward. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What are you pondering there, Lisa? I'm just feeling it. Like I, I think I'm feeling it really deeply be honest mm -hmm. yeah um i think that what has kept those stories quite quiet is a system that its intention is to keep those stories quiet mm -hmm. and not just one there's a few very 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 powerful systems um that for their safety and their security it is keeping stories quiet so that a narrative can be um 
controlled. Mm -hmm. And I think that by turning a blind eye, like you guys were talking about, yeah, some of these stories are horrific and they come from all different places. But turning a blind eye is saying then this is too much for me to endure. So I'm going to just go back into my happy place because that's too much for me to hear. So I'm just going to turn. But too bad. Too bad. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's a part of the system that's keeping the stories quiet. And then all of a sudden, because it's too horrific of a story to hear, when the stories really start coming out, it's like they're downplayed or they're um, made into almost like conspiracy or it gets um, these lives turn into a political debate. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that isn't, that is the old shadow. Mm -hmm. And I think we're right in the middle of this surfacing so that old shadows are starting to get broken down and it's not pretty and it's not easy and it's not nice, but it has to happen. Well, do you remember, I think it was, um, I know I talked to you guys individually about it, but I think I posted it on my podcast, a general story of it in May. And it was about, Spirit had given me a vision of the feminine principle. Again, I'm not saying women, I'm just talking about the feminine softer principle um coming into with these like baseball bats to smash down the walls and the supporting structures of the patriarchy the shadow patriarchy that doesn't fit anymore and it wasn't about smashing down the walls and hurting people or hurting the patriarchy or anything like that um but it was about to smash all the things so that the two sides could meet on level ground they could meet face to face without any of them having these constructs that keep them separate from. And so I think we are in the uh, energies of the crumbling. I saw that. I said that to you the other day that in my morning meditation, that was just, it took over. It was the mass crumbling mm -hmm. of the wall yeah. and there was dust and chaos. And it was like intended for like specifically my, you know, um, guides are saying kind of rise above it so you can see clearly on top so that you're not caught in the mess so you're not caught in the you know the rubble mm -hmm. but making space for the fact that it, it needs to come down mm -hmm. right and it's going to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. yeah and, and people I think don't like change either especially even if it's a change that they don't know the, the facts of or the details or whatever. They know what they know. They know what they've been told. And any kind of change or uprooting means, wait, hold on a second. Everything that I believed for this long, you're telling me now that it's not true? Well, that's too uncomfortable for me to look at because then what does that say about me? No, close the door. I'm actually going to sit where it's comfortable, where I've believed and I've thought and I've known it to be true for all these years because any other way is too uncomfortable because what does that say about me? Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I've come into, like you were saying, I don't want to get in fights on the internet, but I, I don't, I also don't want to be like, oh, like call somebody out for that either. So that's about standing back and looking above the ruffle, the ruffle, like of all the dust mm -hmm. and rising above it and being like, I trust so deeply in the divine timing of where we're at right now to bring change. Mm -hmm. And it can't be, change like I said I, I think I say this every week <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no I hear you now. can't take place in the same energy that the problem was created in it mm -hmm. just can't yep mm -hmm. and I think if we can start to because I think part of the turning away is the lack of engaging in conversation. So one of the things for me that has really been something I'm trying to work on because I get fired up and I really get into that masculine energy of like, this is not okay. Um, but I also know that then I kind of steamroll people and I don't allow space for their, like the both sides, right? The hearing in the middle, the understanding and listening to each other. And I think, um, as you were saying, Lisa, like we can, like we're on the spectrum of this is the reality that we're in and the way to change the problems is to come at it from that higher perspective. Um, you can't, you can't make change from the same headspace and mindset that you're, that you're, that the problem was created. Mm -hmm. You can't change a paradigm 
that is fundamentally set up to sustain itself. That just, that can't happen. And so I think we need to really remember those things. And I think we really need to remember that we can engage in conversations and we can make change while coming at it from a place of not turning an eye, not turning away, not avoiding the discomfort and engaging in conversation to help us all start to understand and look at these things differently. And I think it comes down to a fundamental aspect of as society, we don't want to feel uncomfortable, especially those of us who are in a privileged place. Mm -hmm. The fact that we don't want to feel that shows that the patriarchy is doing its job, right? Well, that that's systemic way of being. I think that right now is the crumbling of this wall, is the exactly. crumbling of the old yeah. way. And so but we got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Build a new like solid structure until one's down. So mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I think that we can offer love and support as it's falling and that the voices come forward and that these, this, these voices and these lives that are, have been stifled for so long. I think one of the best way of support right now is allowing these voices to be heard. Mm -hmm stop and check yourself and everything that you've learned up until now from a privileged perspective, which all three of us come from a very privileged perspective, stop and, and stop mm -hmm. and say, I'm going to allow things to surface that might feel uncomfortable. I'm going to allow it to surface and hear what it really, like what really needs to be heard. And I think when we have discomfort arise with these conversations, um, and honestly, uh, it's the um, BIPOC people through learning through Black Lives Matter and a lot of these Indigenous conversations and the things that are going on that taught me, if you are feeling discomfort, it is because something is coming up in you that is confronting. It feels like scary change. So look at it. Don't just say like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. This is wrong. I don't want to go there. It's no, I'm uncomfortable because something is telling me that there's change right. and I need to, that's my responsibility as a privileged yeah. person. That is my responsibility to dig into those emotions. And that is spirituality. That is being spiritual. There's no yeah. light and love doesn't exist without that shadow work. And so yeah. I heard that yesterday too. Someone was saying the same thing, kind of instead of calling it judgment and being like, because you can feel it arise in you where there's like a judgmental kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, instead of the judgment coming up is how is this reflecting? Like, how is this reflecting back to me? Something that uh, I need to look at. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's, it's that of a reflection back at you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if we get really, really damn uncomfortable, good. Mm -hmm. where do we need to see mm -hmm. I encourage people to get uncomfortable and dig in mm -hmm. and use your practices and your spiritual nature and whatever those wellness practices are for you to support yourself in moving through that uncomfort but it's not in a way of avoiding it's a way of moving deeper into it yeah. to move and shift and start to change your perspectives I'll admit you know Four or five years ago, I was very uncomfortable talking about these things. My white, my privilege was like, my white privilege was like, hey, no, this is scary and uncomfortable. I'm scared I'm going to say something wrong. And, but I've come to a place now where it, I've learned it's our responsibility to learn. If I want to call myself, you know, I, somebody who's spiritual, if I want to say I'm a medium, if I want to, you know, teach a, a movement practice from another culture, I have to do the work to, if I want to say that I'm, you know, I'm here for all of humanity. I have to do the work to actually well, that's show up just that it way. for everybody. If everybody wants to be an active part of our human culture, you got to do the work mm -hmm. to start standing up for humans. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and you have words to say, anything. you don't have to have the action part of it is like, even for this week, let's make a little challenge is that if there's an uncomfortable story or something that surfaces, dig into it a bit. Mm -hmm learn something mm -hmm. outside of the sources that you've been listening to or feeling safety with for the past mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. You Jeanette, we've got like five minutes. We're charged. Um, I think too, is just to build on top of what you guys are saying too, is even, um, even if you're not triggered by being uncomfortable, what if you were to get curious about the other side of the story of why, where you stand? 
-hmm. right? Because if we're looking at this, say, politically, if we're looking at this even pro-anti-vax, right? And I'm not going to get into the details of that, mm -hmm. but if you're pro-vax or anti-vax, have you spent time exploring why the other side is saying what they're saying, mm -hmm. right? So that's even just vaccine alone. We're, we're seeing these surfacings of information, of truths, of ideas, of things we need to look at culturally, uh, based on race, politically, in medicine as well now. We're seeing this in communities. We're seeing this in gender, uh, the gender, gender identification. We are seeing it in everything. We're seeing it in men versus women, masculinity versus femininity. We are seeing it everywhere. It is coming up everywhere. Everything is being shaken like this to reveal what is remaining. Mm -hmm. And so even if you feel like you have a good stance of who and what you are and what you're doing, I encourage you to get curious about the other side and you may spend time checking it out and come right back to your stance. And that's great. Mm -hmm. But you will come out more educated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's a willingness to have those either discussions or explorations. And that's the thing. It might be uncomfortable, right? It might be uncomfortable even being curious because that does um, provide a, like change for somebody and to step out of a comfort zone, just even to be curious can be enormously uncomfortable for people, mm -hmm. right? So it's just an invitation. Yeah. That's where growth happens. It's where the big stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm so happy that we got to dive into this today. I really mm -hmm. am. I think it's um, I think it's a much needed conversation, and I hope it does spark more conversation for people. Mm -hmm. And anybody that has any feedback on anything that we said today or any week, please leave in the comments below, mm -hmm. uh, and share this video. And uh, let's let's get these conversations started for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, awesome. Okay, well, ladies, thanks for uh, getting together, and thank you everyone for listening and cool. watching today. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next next week. week.